So many moons ago, for Christmas, myself and my brother, we got two mountain bikes, one each. And this, as a young fella, was, it was our ticket to freedom. It meant we could actually uh, cycle down the fields, as in we could go further from home than we'd ever gone before, right? We could rip down the fields to the last field, you know? Uh, we could also actually eventually, then uh, a year or two later, cycle into town. We lived about a mile and a half from town, not, 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 not very far. So, uh, But we could just cycle in. It just gave us freedom. We could actually decide, I think I'll go now and then go, you know, and, and come back when you want kind of thing and not be not so reliant on lifts. Of course, before mobile phones as well, so you'd always have to arrange a time in advance where we'll meet and what time we'll meet, and life was very complicated back then. So... Uh, but it just it gave us the opportunity to explore and to, to, to fly the nest kind of thing. Uh, a good experience. In human development in general, it's necessary and important for us to, in, in, a, in a natural way and in a good way, cut our ties with, with home. Now, obviously, be careful now. I'm, I'm not, we'll try and maintain a balance here. We do eventually have to make our own decisions, direct our own lives, uh, decide for ourselves, make decisions for ourselves. If we can't be 30 years of age saying, Mammy, what should I do today, Mammy? What can I have for breakfast, Mammy? Mammy, who should I marry, Mammy? You know, I mean, eventually you have to kind of man up and you know, start directing your own life, okay? Uh, and I, I think it's, it's similar in, in the spiritual life. There comes a time when we go along to Mass because our parents bring us, uh, we go, we learn about the faith because we went to Catholic school and all of these decisions are kind of being made for us by, by the current, the flow towards, towards the faith, uh, which is happening around us with or without us, okay? And we're kind of carried along by it. But that only lasts so long and then eventually a certain maturation is required in the faith that I decide what I want to do. I decide if this is important to me. I decide my prayer life. And, and see... You know, we always have to maintain balances. Is, it's, it, it's key to, to a healthy understanding of our faith. We should be autonomous to a certain degree. Okay? As we grow up, we should break, you know, cut the, what do they call them? Well, not, not cut the umbilical cord, that sounds a bit graphic. Uh, move, you know, assert our, our, our autonomy, yes. But this in, in no way is to disregard or disrespect our parents. <coughs> I mean, the fact that you decide for yourself what you're going to do with your life and who you're going to marry, that's in no way saying, and you, mom and dad, you don't know nothing. That's, that's not what it means. It just means I, I have to assume responsibility for my decisions. Okay? But you should absolutely get advice from your folks who, who have you know, a, life, a life of experience and all of their mistakes that they've made and learned from and all of that. So absolutely we can and should draw from their experience. When we think of our Blessed Lady, I think she has this, this perfect balance, you see, of she has freedom, she has her autonomy, and yet she recognises at the same time her great need for God. If we, as we're growing up, we, we, you know, we assert our autonomy and independence, and that, that, as I say, that's a good thing, but then if we, do, if we continue on that tra trajectory... So because I'm autonomous, I'm not answerable to anyone. I can do what I want. It doesn't matter. I don't, need, I don't need anyone's advice. I can do whatever I like. What happens? Well, Noah's dive failure is what happens because no one knows everything. And no matter how autonomous we think we are, independent we think we are, that, that you can't control everything. Not everything is in your control. So we have to direct our lives, assume responsibility for the decisions we make. Yes. Even in our prayer, we're asking God to enlighten and inspire us for the decisions we make. So it's, again, it's not done without him. It's done with him. <coughs> but I'm still responsible for my life, for my actions. I have to be. Otherwise, I can just blame God every time something goes wrong. No, no, no. If you don't study, and then you, know, you pray a decade of the rosary beforehand and you fail the exam, it's not because the rosary didn't work. It's because you didn't study. Don't blame God. All right, so like you, we're responsible for our actions, our inactions. Okay, so back to our Blessed Lady. Our Blessed Lady then has this profound 
awareness, right, of the fact that, that she has to direct her life. She has to make decisions. Okay, so she prays and discerns that she's supposed to live in the temple and, and consecrate her virginity to God. She prays and discerns correctly, and then this is the, the life then that she lives, that she will have no knowledge of man. But then she's betrothed to Joseph, and now the angel Gabriel tells her that she's going to be a mom. Now, hold on a sec. I want to do this. I want to, if, if this is God's will for me, I want to accomplish God's will. But I thought you said I was supposed to be a virgin. I'm just, they tend to be kind of mutually exclusive. You know, either you're kind of a mom or you're a virgin. You can't really be a mom virgin. That doesn't, see, there's kind of biology involved. That does, that does, that's not going to work. So uh, I'm open to suggestions. I just don't really know how, you know. So, so like, if you just imagine our lady going, yes. How am I supposed to do this? Like, how am I, how can I do this? I, I want to, I just don't, I just don't know how, because I have to make decisions and direct my life according to God's will. So I just, how, how, can, how can this be? And the, the angel Gabriel clarifies, you know, that the Holy Spirit will come upon you. Okay, now if Our Lady fully understood what that meant, I don't really know, um, because what does that mean, the Holy Spirit will come upon you? I guess, bottom line, it means God will take care of it. God will take care of it. He'll, he'll do his thing. Okay. But then you have this, this answer that has been meditated and contemplated for 2,000 years. Behold the handmaid, the servant of the Lord. May it be done unto me according to your word. It's just, it, it, it's, it's astoundingly simple, but reveals the heart of Our Lady, that she is responsible for the things that she does, but she wants to allow herself to be entirely filled with God and directed by Him. And it's, it's such a, a powerful example to us as Christians, to me as a priest, to us as a church, that we want to facilitate God's will. We still have to make decisions. I mean, even like with this whole coronavirus business, uh, and that we still have to make decisions, and, and God gives us that responsibility. He's not saying, you know, uh, you be completely passive and I'll sort everything out. It's like we'll, we're working on this together. You still have to make decisions. I'll help you, I'll inspire you, I'll guide you, but you still have to make decisions. But do so in the light of God. And so our blessed lady then is filled with, with God, filled with grace. And so she's able to bring Jesus into the world, give, give Jesus, give the second person of the Holy Trinity a human nature. And this is like, it, it's, just, it, it's such, such a beautiful mystery. It's such a, a beautiful way to, to live our lives. We're not slaves or drones or, or, or anything like that where God wants us to be autonomous beings who choose to love him, who choose to follow him. And if we have the choice to love him or to follow him, we also have the choice to do the opposite because we're free. But he wants us to choose to love him. And imagine, and we, we, we did a little experiment uh, in our catechism class the other day. Um, there's a thing called Siri, right, on Apple devices, um, Apple phones and that. And we wanted to see if we could ask, tell, tell Siri or ask Siri if she loved us. So one of the girls said, Siri, do you love me? Because the, the phone might give you the, the answer that you want to hear. I mean, imagine if the phone answered, yes, Anne-Marie, I love you. Okay? So the phone has given you the answer that you want. Are you feeling loved? Actually, as, as it happens, um, we asked Siri, Siri, do you love me? And she answered, I think you're great, or something like that, was it? I think you're really, I think you're great, I think, was, I think was the answer. The, she did not answer, yes, I love you. But even if she had, it, it's pre-programmed. So it's not Siri choosing to love us. It's just, you know, ones and zeros computing, saying, well, this is what a person should say or shouldn't say, so yes, I think you're great. Uh, but it's not, it's not love, it's not free, you see. So our, our freedom is real. God wants us to direct our lives but in his grace. So this freedom that we have, uh, 
God wants us to, 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 to allow him to direct us. And it's, it's, it, Our Lady is just a prime example of it. Now, the Immaculate Conception, obviously, it can be a bit confusing at times because the Immaculate Conception isn't the Immaculate Conception of Jesus. It's that our Blessed Lady herself was conceived without any stain of original sin because she was to be a pure vessel for Jesus, a pure vessel into which Jesus could be, could be born, in which he could be carried. So she is preserved from all stain of original sin. And how is that possible? Uh, it's possible through the cross of Christ. Now, anybody sitting down logically is going to go, hold on a wee second. Jesus, sorry, Mary, Jesus, Jesus dying on the cross, and that's the source of all grace for something that happened before he was born. Exactly. Yep. So, Jesus dies on the cross, that's the source of all grace, and that, because he's God, and because in God, all time is simply present. God is a constant now. Everything is simply present. Beginning, middle, and end. It's all there in God. He's not surprised by anything that happens. He sees the whole story. So yes, he knew Jesus was going to die on the cross and can absolutely apply the, those graces to a period, a time period or an event before Jesus' life. Of course he can. So that's how it worked. So Our Lady is preserved from all sin of original sin through the grace of God, through the power of Jesus' cross so that she can be a, a pure dwelling place for him. But in all of this, Our Lady co-works perfectly with God's will, with God's plan, with God's grace. And hence, she's the example for each priest and for the church and for every member of the faithful. So we pray today that in these times that require such discernment and direction, that we may assume an ever more Marian spirit. Something that can happen in our teens as well is that as we assume this independence, we may even begin to resent our parents and their interference or their advice. And we may have flashbacks of those horrific experiences of being a six-year-old where your mom sees that you've got a bit of jam on your chin. She goes, come here to me, come here. Come here. And she starts cleaning your face in public. Uh, and th that the trauma of that never really leaves you, you know. But... Uh, but then in our teens, you know, Mike, I would ne do you remember that? You might, you might remember that when you were a teen. You'd never want to, maybe you didn't want to even be seen in public with your parents. Remember that? I actually remember that now. You didn't want to be seen with your parents. My goodness. Uh, hopefully, anyway, that time, that, that period passes. And then you recognize the, the, the need and the, the, yeah, the beauty of your own family. This can happen in the church too, though, that asserting our independence excessively, exaggerating our own independence, we kind of begin to resent Our Lady and God as Father. And dare I say, I think that has happened. I think we're in a bit of a teenage rebellion in the church at the moment where Our Lady, uh, she's too, kinda, too pious and simple and humble. We don't like that. We like avant-garde theology, cutting-edge stuff. Go away with your rosary and stations of the cross. Don't mind that. And then God as Father, mm, it's a little too exclusive. It's a little too politically incorrect. Let's just call him God the divine energy. Or God the creator. Let's keep it nice and broad. Creator. Creator. No one is offended by creator. Let's call him creator. And then we're in this teenage rebellion against our parents. Because we, we know better. <coughs> our 15-year-old heads know better than our eternal Father and our Heavenly Mother. Let's pray and hope that as we mature in the faith, we we'll grow up and recognize the wisdom and the greatness of our Heavenly Father and the powerful intercession of our Heavenly Mother and that we might once again be a united family in the church and so become a welcoming place for all of those sitting on the fence looking for a home, looking for somewhere to belong, looking for peace, looking for light, and looking for warmth. May the church be the answer to all of those needs for so many people in darkness. Amen.